It's your boy King Pan Rose. What up? It's Abe Orca. Yo, what's up? It's King Malik. It's Dante Rose. It's your girl, Sasha Gohar. I'm straight from the go. And I'm so from the go. So growing up with my dad, um, every time I got in the car with him, he was listening to V103, which is the old school R&B uh, radio station. So I was listening to like Marvin Gaye, Music Soul Child, um, Aretha Franklin, and Stevie Wonder. Um, and my mom's side, she wanted me to learn more about the classical music stuff. Uh, and I actually grew up classically trained. I started off on upright bass, so I have that classical background. Um, so it's been a mix of R&B, old school R&B, jazz, and classical. I started when I was eight or nine, and I started off on upright bass. Um, classically trained, started off in group classes. Um, after that, started to graduate more into, I went to a merit school of music, so my education was a lot more formal, was a lot more structured. From that, I was able to take all the things I learned and put it towards learning guitar. I taught myself how to play guitar for about, well, up until now, it's so about like six, seven years now. Um, but that's, that's how I started. I started off on upright bass when I was about eight, nine, and the uh, rest is history. Probably, it had to be a Stevie Wonder tune, so like, isn't she lovely or as I, I love as that's uh, probably one of my favorite Stevie Wonder tunes um, with jazz. I was listening to a lot of Thelonious Monk when I was younger, um, still now to this day. So listening to Ruby, my dear by Thelonious Monk and of course around midnight. Those are my two favorite. I think that's my two favorite jazz standards ever. Uh, but yeah, those two or those three. Present, hands down, 100%, Frank Ocean. Love Frank Ocean. Um, and I'll throw Kanye in there too. Kanye has a huge influence on me and my music. And no longer with us, Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye. He's one of my favorite musicians, especially when it comes to singing and his compositions and stuff like that. He, he sticks out to me. One thing was being patient. Um, this is, music is a lifelong journey, and especially when you're studying an instrument and you're, you're really working on your craft. Uh, I'm an, a very impatient dude, but I've learned to kind of tone it back and focus more on the details and working on really dedicating myself to my craft. Being patient was one of the hardest ones, and then, because that, that also bridges over to like being disciplined enough to like practice all the time. That was a hard one for me. I cannot stay patient and practice all the time. And I wish I practiced when I was younger because I'll be a much better musician than I am today. Practice. <laughs> if I practice, man, I'll be, I know I'll be the baddest out now. He helped, he helped me find that R&B and old school hip hop scene um, because that's, that's what I was, that was my stimulus. That's what I was around all the time, especially when I was around him. Um, so listening, he played a big part and then my mom also played a big part uh, because she saw that I was really into music and that I was really excited to learn how to play. This was something I was passionate towards. So she pushed me into the classical field. She got me started on my first instrument. She's been supporting me ever since. With different classes, uh, financially supporting me with those classes and making sure that I'm all right. If I have a, a project I'm working on, I talk to her about it. I also talk to my dad about it. Yeah, it was not good. <laughs> it, was, it was not good. Um, when I was at music school, I was, I was, for the longest time, I'm just now being more extroverted, uh, but for the longest time growing up, I was very introverted. So when I was at music school, I was by myself most of the time uh, at the lunch table. And I remember I was writing this song. It was a rap. I can't tell you what it was about, 
but I'm glad I forgot about it. That's for sure. I'm glad I never released it. I'm glad it's gone. <laughs> Oh man, man! Even compared to a year ago, I I look back and I'm like, wow! I've, I've just grown so much as a man, and I've grown so much in my career. And those two things are connected. Everything is connected. Um, so I'll think back. One of the things I I like to think about is like, if I practice, where would I be now? And I don't take it as a negative thing and try to think of it or stay in the past tense. But more of like, let's start today, see how far I can get in the future. It's, t it's definitely, I see pros and cons with it. Uh, pros, you're connected to anybody, anywhere, at any time. If I want to connect with somebody in LA, I can shoot them a text over uh, Instagram. We can connect off of that. It's made networking so much easier. Um, but as an artist, yeah, as an artist, it's hard to consistently post on social media, especially when you don't have a team behind you. Um, and as artists, you're not made to create content like that at, at such a fast rate and at mass. Our art takes time. Our, like making a song, that takes, that takes a long time, depending on who you are. It might take a couple weeks or whatever. But it's hard to kind of balance quantity over quality. Usually when you're in the social media game, you're trying to build up a name for yourself, you're taking time away from something that you could spend on your craft or something like that. Uh, so there's pros and cons with everything. I see it more as an opportunity for myself, for me to carve a niche for myself and make myself like a uh, household name. But it's pros and cons with everything. Typical writing day. So, I produce all my own music. Uh, I do the prints in that way. So I usually start off with the chords. I'll play something on my piano or uh, my keyboard or on my guitar and figure out where to go from there. Maybe an idea or a concept comes up where I'm like, okay, I can, I can explore this more. I can make this into an actual song. Um, Right now, I've been really, I've been having a lot of fun working with nostalgia and playing off of nostalgia, make, going into that concept while pairing other concepts like storytelling and stuff like that and trying to accurately tell my story in a way that you as the listener feel connected to whatever that concept I'm, I'm talking about or just the nostalgia, having that warm feeling inside. Um, the production process takes, nah, the writing takes the longest for me. I'm not, I'm not a writer writer. I would like to be, I'm a work, I'm working hard on it. But for me, composing and making the beat, that's more comfortable for me because that's my training. So I'm trying to get out of my shell. I'm learning how to sing, learn how to rap a little bit. Uh, and that's what usually takes the most time is figuring out the lyrics and the way to say them. The flow, the flow is easy -er for me, but figuring out how to actively communicate my message to the audience or to the, to the listener. So, Neo Soul, huge, huge D'Angelo fan. I've studied that man and his music since, since I was really young. Um, and ever since then, that kind of split into the whole Soulquarian scene with Erica Badu, Common, uh, Questlove, and Jay Dilla. I got into Jay Dilla that way too. I knew it, I like Neo Soul because it's it's kind of like limitless. It's not pop. It can be pop. It's not really R and B, but it can be R and B. It's a mix of everything. It's a mix of jazz, gospel, rock, even, and R and B. And I'm able to active, like, I'm able to communicate myself or express myself fully uh, while in that box of Neo Soul. There's two. So I was working off an old Dell laptop. My, that was my first laptop that I was working on producing. Um, and every, try to, every time I tried to do something, it was just slow. It was incredibly slow. So 
I made it a mission to save up every penny, every dollar that I could to buy a MacBook Pro. And that's that's changed my life. More recently, um, FO Studios has been doing something weird with my computer. And I think it's because I'm running out of space on my on my main hard drive. So every time I play a sample, like if I'm recording guitar in there, if I close the app, maybe go back to it in in like a week or something, it's not there anymore. It says missing file. So that's really frustrating for me. <laughs> I remember me and my best friend, uh, King Malik, we would go over to Harold Washington Library at the U Media Center. That in itself is like a whole different arc <laughs> in terms of like a story, you know what I'm saying? Um, so it, it was interesting trying to record and you got a bunch of people in that small little space and people are knocking on the door trying to see what you're doing, trying to come in. Got really annoying, but me and him, we just laugh it off. Um, there's a few times where I'll make a weird noise and he'll laugh at it. So it's making music with him was a fun and also funny experience. <laughs>